I first came here, this butte stood out so incredibly, this isolated towering mass. And I just found it compelling when I was asked to go and do rock art recordings there. Um, intrigued what would be up there. It had an enormous impact in what I actually found there near the top for the next several decades. It was a very simple site that marked the sun. With We happened to be there near summer solstice, only a, a few days away, and this beautiful dagger of light bisected a spiral about 15 inches across. And that was so impactful and visually that that became my study further and further through the decades to learning that it marked the sun through the seasons and eventually we learned it marked the lunar cycle too. We decided to record it very early. The very first year we did um, stills and then I realized this is motion. This dagger is moving down. It's an ancient time lapse. We need to put film on this and to show the motion of that light and shadow pattern, because that's the drama of it. The tip of the dagger is quite sharp, and it's going down, down, down with the top to it, with the shadow going like that. And if you don't see the movement, you don't really get the full impact. So filming seemed to be the way to go for that. What you can see here is the eastern of the three slabs. Those slabs are oriented, so the sun from mid-morning to solar noon, when it's in the south sky, shines in between their openings and casts these vertical forms of light. And the petroglyphs are so positioned that the dagger for the summer solstice, the highest of the sun in the year, goes right through the center of the large spiral. At equinox, the little spiral has a needle of light coming through another opening. And then at uh, winter solstice, two daggers come on the outer edges of the large spiral. So once we found the markings at the Sun Dagger site with the two ends of the cycle, winter, summer solstice, and equinox so often marked, we had to ask the question, well, we noticed that Pablo Benito looked as though it was also aligning and marking those positions of the sun. We're at the mid wall of the building, the mid axis of Pablo Benito, this massive building. And it's so exactly north-south that every day when the sun is in the middle of its daily journey from rise to set, it, there will be no shadow on this wall. It will show us the middle point of the sun's daily journey. And what's so interesting is that a right angle to that is in the exterior wall. It's really making an architectural statement that's related to the cosmos to the sun in this case, with major axes to the sun. This wall that's the exterior wall of Pueblo Benito, 250 feet long, it's precisely aligned to the east and the west, so that on the nights of equinox, just on those nights, you'll see the sun set directly along the trajectory of that wall. That's March 21st, September 21st the middle of the sun's annual journey. This is a building devoted to ceremony, cosmology, all related to the sun, aligning to the sun, observing the sun, following its cycles through the seasons. That probably was the motivation to build on this scale. It is like a sundial in a way, but it's also a statement of the importance of the north-south axis. And you'll see in many of the buildings that the north doorway in the kivas is a beautiful T doorway, sometimes exactly north, so that you see the stars moving around it, um, around the pole star. That's the interest they had in north and south. South for the sun, north for the, for the dark and the sky of the night and the polar axis, and here is for in Pueblo thought, this is the time of full life, the South.
Thank you.